Shalom, Shalom, Akiyam. First and foremost, I would like to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Raka Kwedash. I would also like to give a double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, where I learned this 144% truth. I would also like to say peace and salutations to the hopeful elect scattered throughout all four corners of this earth. It's just Bayan back again through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. And I just wanted to get into a brief lesson uh, showing an example, you know, of how Esau Edom, the so called white man, you know, has constantly afflicted, persecuted, and downtrodden our so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Now, what I wanted to do was um, pretty much land back off of, a, off of a lesson that the beloved Elder Yashawamba did earlier today, uh, going into uh, Jake. You know, that was given 400 years for uh, supposedly being a getaway driver to a, to a uh, robbery back in uh, the 1980s. You know, it sparked my spirit, you know, when I when I watched the lesson. You know, and it honestly, it vexed me, you know, to think of how Esau Edom, the so-called white man, you know, has been able to, you know, completely uh, deal with us treacherously, man. Us so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. And we understand, you know, that Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai has put us in the hand of this bloodthirsty, perverse, forward-speaking, abominable, abomination of a human being. You know, but ultimately, at the end of the day, this damn devil is going to have to reap everything that he sowed. You see, from dealing with our so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans uh, treacherously, to destroying the planet Earth, to thumbing his nose up, to our power, Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai. These things are going to have to be uh, answered for. There's a penalty for everything that this man has done. So, through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, before we grab that clip uh, from the beloved elders' lesson, right? Let's grab a few precepts. Let's get this first. In the book of Amos, the first chapter, in the 11th verse, and it reads, Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Edom, and Edom, for those of you that don't know, Edom, okay, is Esau, the so-called white man. And pursuant to the book of Genesis, the 36th chapter, all right, verses 1 and 8, Esau is Edom, okay? And Edom in the Hebrew, Adawam, okay, means what? Red. Let's continue on. Because he's the red man. That's why we say the so-called white man. Let's continue on. And for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof. Because he did pursue his brother with the sword. And who's his brother? Jacob. Which would consist of us so-called Negroes. Latinos and Native Americans. And this man has been pursuing us with the sword since the beginning. He was pursuing us with the sword when we came out of Egypt, man. And the phone chimed in. Scripture goes into how he was tailing the uh matter of fact, what's that? Deuteronomy 25. Let's get that real quick. Real quick. This is why Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai told us to remember this bastard. You see, the book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 25, because he's going to pay for these things. All right. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 25 and verse, I'll start at verse 17. All right. And the verses, um, yeah, I'll start at verse 17 and I'll just read down. The, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 25 and verse 17, it reads, remember what Amalek did unto thee by the way. And Amalek is the chief house 
of Esau Edom. Okay? These are the individuals that are in the position of power as I speak. All right? These small hats, these international banking families. Okay? The elite of the world that we live in today. Remember what Amalek did unto thee by the way when ye were come forth out of Egypt. How he met thee by the way and smote the handmost of thee. Even all that were feeble behind thee when thou was faint and weary and he feared not Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. So yeah, this grimy uh, weak bastard okay was killing the young the feeble and the old okay that were in the rare okay of us when we were coming out of the uh, coming out of Egypt man he has to answer for that that's still a tab that hasn't been paid for but Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is going to require it Soon come. Let's continue on. There was a penalty for that. Therefore it shall be. When the Lord thy power. Hath given thee rest from all thine enemies. Round about. In the land. Which the Lord thy power. Giveth thee for an inheritance to possess it. Which is what? Israel man. Jerusalem. See. We getting that land back man. We get in that land back. Thus says the Lord. Let's continue on. That thou shall blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. Thou shalt not forget it. And this gives credence to Esau Edom, the so-called white man, being on the scene as I speak. Edom hasn't been done away with. Like this devil vocab no precept Malone likes to <laughs> likes to say no Esau Edom the so-called white man is on the scene great future judgment is pending for this devil and his nation because remember Yahweh Baha Shem Yahweh Shai judges you individually and he also judges nations man Look what he's done to us so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. The people whom he loves. You see? So Edom, Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, starting with the chief house. Okay? Amalek, those small hats. Right? They're going to be blotted out. And this goes right into Obadiah 1 and 18. Okay? Where the northern and southern, king, northern and southern kingdom are going to have a cookout with these devils, man. You see that? Let's go back to Amos. Hey, thus says the Lord. After that thousand years of captivity, man, that one thousand years captivity of you serving hard bondage, pursuing the Obadiah 1 and 18, you're going to be gathered up and eviscerated, man. Thus says the scriptures. That's a future prophecy, man. Let's continue on in Amos uh, 1 and 11. Let's read it from the top. Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Edom, and for four I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because he did pursue his brother with the sword and did cast off all pity, and his anger did tear perpetually, and he kept his wrath forever. This man showed no mercy. And this man's wrath has been perpetual, man. We can go no far, no further back than the transatlantic slave trade, man. Okay, throughout the time of him persecuting the northern and southern kingdom. Because he reigned upon the northern kingdom first. You see, Gad and the other Taino tribes are already here. This man, this man's history testifies against him. It's undeniable that he's that violent, bloody man. 
And this devil is going to have to pay for everything that he has done. You know, and even to this day, this man persecutes us, man, and forwards our affliction. This man's whole uh, uh, justice system is set up to persecute us, man. To persecute us so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Why do you think the majority of the individuals that are in his penitentiaries are us so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans? That's not a coincidence. It's all by design. Okay, and this is why this individual, okay, that was given a 400-year sentence. Let's get that clip. For being so quote unquote supposedly a a, a a getaway driver, that that's that's unheard of. That's absolutely ridiculous. Why would you give somebody four hundred years off the top? For who's gonna live that long in this lifetime? Like, what's the point of saying uh, four hundred years? You got four hundred years. Just say you got life and call it a day. Why four hundred years, man? It just goes to show how wicked this man is, man. It's what it is. Let's get this clip real quick. In a Broward County, Florida courtroom, this is the last time Sidney Holmes will wear the prison uniform he's donned for decades, spending 34 years behind bars. Uh, no longer is the wrong man uh, confined uh, to a Florida state prison. He was serving an unheard of 400 year sentence for a 1989 robbery conviction. Yeah, even that devil said it. He was serving out an unheard of 400 years, right? Wicked bastards. The original prosecutor wanted no chance of parole. He has maintained his innocence, and a recent reinvestigation by the state attorney's conviction review unit agreed, finding no evidence leaking Holmes to the robbery, and that eyewitnesses likely confused him with someone else. We uh, had an opportunity to exonerate a man who's been in prison uh, wrongfully. Uh, we had an opportunity to do the right thing today, uh, to right or wrong. Holmes broke down in tears while in court Monday, embracing Broward County State Attorney Harold Pryor. Outside, family members waiting anxiously. It's over. It's a long, long, long time overdue. We have lost loved ones while he's been incarcerated. His father, his grandparents. And then, dressed in a button-down shirt and blue jeans. The moment Sidney Holmes had been waiting for. <laughs> Hugging his mother, Mary Holmes, crying tears of joy. I just praise God and I thank everybody who's been so good to make this day possible. I know this day was going to come. It's on our lady. And today is today. One by one, expressing gratitude to the family members that had stood by his side for years. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Grateful to everyone who never gave up fighting. For his freedom. Anything you'd like to say to community members who've been rallying behind you, waiting for this day? Thank you. Thank you for everything. You see that? And what's so sickening is that this damn devil, Esau Edom, the so called white man, this devil, right? His people would do abominable crimes, atrocious things. And they won't even see a life sentence, man. These devils are getting off. These devils are do that much time on a murder charge. But scripture goes into how they're not as troubled as other men, man. What's that? Psalms, um, Psalms, the 73rd chapter. Matter of fact, let me just get that real quick. I wasn't going to go there, but let me just get it. Let's just grab it real quick. Because that, that, you know, this is... This is, the scriptures are speaking loud and clear. This is how we know who this demon is. From the way he looks, from the way he eats, how he likes his meat. Okay? To him being a cunning hunter. You see? From him being red. The scriptures expose this devil for who he is. We know who this devil is. For him being a, um, a fierce, a nation of a fierce countenance. They show no mercy. Right? Let's get this real quick. Um, the book of Psalms chapter 73 and let's go straight to the point right they are not in trouble as other men 
neither are they plagued like other men. Right. And this is why, you know, you would never hear of a, a, a damn Edomite. OK, facing a 400 year sentence for being a getaway driver and a robbery, man. As a matter of fact, it, it, he probably wouldn't have even seen a day in jail. He probably would have been out on parole or some shit like that. Excuse my French. You see, because why? They are not in trouble as other men. But they're going to be. They're going to be, though. That Deuteronomy 30 and 7 is coming. All these curses are fitting the rest upon you damn demons, man. And the rest of you heathen. See, it's coming. See, evil E, you're not going to be shown no mercy, man. Why? Because what's the saying, James, man? What's the saying, James, the second chapter? The book of St. James, chapter 2, and verse 13, it reads, For he shall have judgment without mercy that have shown no mercy. See that? You've shown no mercy. So when your judgment comes upon you, you're not going to be shown any. See? You're going to fall into the hands of a cruel messenger. Let's continue on. And mercy rejoiceth against judgment. You are not going to receive any mercy when the tables turn. And pursuing the biblical prophecy, the tables are going to turn. You devils are going to be wasting away, okay, in the prison house. You're going to be stripped away from your family, man, to never see your children and your wife again. You're going to serve out a hardcore uh, bondage, man. And then have to come back in another lifetime and do it again. It's going to be your turn, man. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh is going to flip the tables on you, man. There's going to be a transition of positions, man. Thus says the Bible. This is not forever. Okay? You being in the position of the ruler of the earth, that's not forever. This is temporary. Your rulership is a temporary uh, uh, moment. This is just a space of time of you being in the position of power. But the time's coming where you're going to get spoiled, man. Let's go ahead. The book of Isaiah chapter 33 and verse 1 and it reads, Woe to thee that spoilest and thou was not spoiled. Let's go ahead real quick. Let's get this word spoiled this real quick. Strong's H, 7703. Shadad. Shadad. Okay, and it goes into what? To deal violently with. Despoil, devastate, ruin, destroy, spoil. This is what you've done to Yasha Allah. You've dealt violently with us, man. You've completely destroyed our people. And you've never let up. Like the scripture says, it's been perpetual. Like Amos says, it was perpetual. You see, you've had a perpetual um, uh, hatred towards us, man. Your wrath was perpetual. It's never stopped. You've never let up. You've never let up, man. So what's going to happen when the tables turn? When it's our turn to, to, to be the head and you're the tail? Let's go back. Let's go back to uh, Isaiah real quick. Continuing on in the book of Isaiah 33 and verse 1. And it reads, Woe to thee that spoilest, and thou was not spoiled, and dealest treacherously. And they dealt not treacherously with thee. 
And this reminds me of the Native American, so-called Native Americans, man. How you came off those ships sick, weak, feeble. See, and our people fed you herbs and other remedies that get you on your feet for you to just turn around, break every single treaty you made with our people and then stab us in the back and damn near try to kill us off, man. So what's good, what do you think is going to happen when the tables turn? Let's continue on. When thou shall cease to spoil and shall be spoiled. And when thou, let me read that again, Salak. When thou shall cease to spoil, thou shall be spoiled. And when thou shall make an end to deal treacherously, they shall deal treacherously with thee. Who's they? Yasha Allah. Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai is going to allow you devils to fall in the hands of us so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. And this is a fate you cannot escape. It's written. We couldn't escape falling into your hands, man. The curse is going to how the Lord was going to deliver us into your hands, man. Let me get this in Ezekiel. Let's prove this point. And we always get this. We always get, hey, these scriptures never run out of ammo. This word is fire and your people would, man, at Jeremiah 5. You people are being consumed by these words, man. By the words of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Hey, there's is gonna come a time where this the talking is over with, man. Prophecy is gonna, gonna begin to continue to speak and not lie. Hey, these things are gonna be real life, real time. We're not gonna be prophesying and preaching all uh forever. No, Yahweh Shai is on his way, man. And when he cracks these skies, hey, it's game over. Let's get this. The book of Ezekiel chapter 25 and verse 14, it reads, I will lay my vengeance upon Edom. Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, by the hand of my people, Israel. See that? The northern and the southern kingdom of so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, man. And there's no escape, right? And they shall do in Edom according to mine anger and according to my fury. So this is going to be a divine anger and a divine fury. This is why we're going to need those divine bodies. Because scripture goes into how we're going to meditate terror. These feeble uh, bodies we're in now, they'll pity this man. Not those divine ones, though, that, that are in the spirit of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, okay, willing to execute justice and judgment, righteous justice and judgment, man. Hey, this is why scripture says, and we say it all the time, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power. And that's exactly what you devils are going to do when this prophecy here is fulfilled. Because scripture says we're going to be like gods, man. Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai is going to have his men, the 144, starting with the 144,000 men, low willing with part of that precious number. We're going to be many Yahweh, uh, many Yahweh Shai's, man. Low willing with part of that precious number. Those are the hands you're going to fall into first and foremost, man. And Yahweh, as we're reading here, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is going to ordain it. Let's continue on. And they shall know my vengeance, saith the Lord power. You're going to know Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai in that day. What's that, Sirach 36? 
let them know thee as we have known thee. <laughs> that there is no other power but Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Through that judgment that Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai is going to execute upon you devils. You're going to know that there's a higher power and his name is Yahweh. And his only begotten son is Yahweh Shai. All this thumbing your nose up. God is dead. Uh, um, you know, his creations and, um, you know, uh, everything he's done is pretty much, um, what's the term that this devil used? Um, ah, uh, damn, there was a term that this devil, you've all know, Harari used pretty much, um, absolute. Talking about uh, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh's creation is absolute. No, you devils are going to know in that day. <laughs> the worst thing you did was thumb your nose up to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, blaspheme the Holy Spirit, and put your hands on the apple of his eyes, which is a so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. As you're going to realize that was the worst mistake you ever made, man. And that day is coming. It's written. That judgment is coming upon y'all, man. It came upon us. You better believe it's coming upon you. You better believe it's coming upon you, man. And us so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, us men, all right, that have been endowed with the Holy Spirit, we're going to tell you before it comes. That was that. That's prophecy. And what did Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai command us to do? Prophesy against you demons. Let's go here. Let's jump up to... um. The 35th chapter of Ezekiel. Yeah, we're saying before, <laughs> which is prophecy, which is the testimony of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, man, pursuant to Revelations 19 and 10. And that's the spirit, his men come in, man. The spirit of prophecy. Okay? It's going to come to pass, whether you believe it or not, whether you kill us or not, it's, this is going to come to pass. There's no way around. There's no escaping it. There's no escaping your destiny, man. The book of Ezekiel chapter 35 and verse 1, and it reads, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir and prophesy against it. And Mount Seir is anywhere this damn demon hangs his hat at. And we know, okay, that America a.k.a. Babylon the Great, spiritually Sodom in Egypt, is where this man pro propels all of his wickedness out of him, man. Pursuing the um, Revelation 17, man. This is, the, this is the abominations of the earth. You see that? Let's continue on. And say unto it, thus saith the Lord power, Behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee. See, so Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is against you devils, man. But this whole time, you thought he was with you and he was likened unto yourself. But no. He's nothing like you. He's never been on your side, man. He's used you. You've been in the trick bag the whole time. And you were only used to, to be the whooping stick Towards us so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans because of our disobedience. Because us breaking the law, statutes, and commandments, man. See? And the words of the Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, his words of old flared up against us because of our disobedience. But it's coming to a time where you're gonna be done away with. Your services are no longer required, man. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is against you, man. We're reading it right here. I am against thee, and I will stretch out my hand against thee, and I will make thee most desolate. And it's coming. Desolation is coming. And we're seeing it build up. <laughs> right now, uh, uh, I was reading the article earlier today. Those Russians are uh, pretty much, they looking at America as a laughing stock, man. Uh, Putin was mentioning how, um, well, I'm not sure if he said it or one of his, uh, uh, somebody on in, in his, on his team, but needless to say, uh, it was said that, uh, you know, they were like, oh, pretty much, you know, America putting all those sanctions out there, 
That's how they compromise themselves and why the and this is why the banks are going up in smoke, kicking the bucket. You see? So they're over there just looking at America like you niggas are stupid. This place has become a laughing stock, man. Complete laughing stock. Shame is covering this place, man. Shame for glory, man. Let's continue on. I will lay thy cities waste. This is what's coming. And thou shall be desolate. And thou shall know that I am the Lord. Because thou has had a perpetual hatred. And has shed the blood of the children of Israel. By the force of the sword. And the time of their calamity. And the time that their iniquity had it in. Right. You have you've had a perpetual hatred towards us, man. And it shows in this in this small in this small example, okay, with this with this individual here, this Jake, that you gave four hundred years for for supposedly being a getaway driver in a robbery. Four hundred years for being a getaway driver? I mean, damn. 400 years? I mean, that's silly in itself. You know, because you could just say you got life. But why even to give them life for, for being a getaway driver in a robbery? But that's how Jake gets... Hey, the curses are real. The curses are real. We are those people, man. Our so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. But the, but the beautiful thing about it is there's light at the end of the tunnel. And tables are gonna sh are gonna soon turn. Tables are gonna soon turn. Let's continue on. Let's read this again from the top. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and has shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword and the time of their calamity and the time that their iniquity had an end. Right. And again, you don't have to do any type of deep. Uh, in-depth research to come to the conclusion that Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, has shed our blood. I can simply just Google lynchings right now in America and you're going to see pictures of Jake lynched with Esau at the bottom of the picture looking in the camera frame. Smiling. See? Let's continue on. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord power, I will prepare thee unto blood. Yahweh Bashim Yahshah said he's going to prepare you unto blood, man. Why? Because you forwarded our affliction, man. That's why. You went up, over, and beyond. Matter of fact, let me get that real quick. The book of Zechariah, chapter 1. In verse 15, and it reads, and I am very sore displeased with the heathen, right? Because all you heathen have afflicted us, man. But Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, he's done a number on our nation. He's completely overdone it. Scripture says uh, he kept his wrath forever, man. Amos 1 and 11 proves that, that he's done, that he's done the most. Let's continue on. And I am very sore displeased with the heathen that are at ease. For I was but a little displeased. And they help forward the affliction. You see, you help completely keep us downtrodden and destroyed. Okay, you went overboard. Evil E went overboard with it. But that's fine because it's coming. We're coming to a time. Hey. Where Yahweh Ba Shim Yahweh Shai is gonna go overboard with you. See? You're gonna see how it feels to be in the straight. Let's go back to that Ezekiel 35 and finish off. We'll close out here if the Spirit allows. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord Power, I will prepare thee unto blood. See, so Yahweh Baha Shem Yahweh Shai is preparing you unto blood, man. He's going to do this. He's going to make this happen. 
See, a divine judgment is going to come upon you devils, man. Divine judgment. There's no way Esau Eden is not on the scene. With all this future pending judgment written in the scriptures for these for these people, man. We can clearly see through the characteristics of you people that you're these Edomites. You're the Edomites, man. Esau Edom is the so-called white man. Point blank, period. If you can't see that, there's something wrong with you. There's truly something wrong with you if you can't see that Esau Edom is the so-called is the so-called white man. Let's continue on. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord Power, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. Scripture says you're gonna be chased out of the world, man. Everybody's gonna be seeking for your life in the kingdom to come, man. Saith, sit slack here. See if thou has not hated blood, right? They like to drink blood, they bathe in it, right? They love their raw uh, meat raw. This is what they do. Even blood shall pursue thee. You see? And this is all going to be executed by who you people inwardly call God and Jesus Christ. The true name of the Heavenly Father being Yahweh, which means He is, He exists, He's omnipotent. Bahashem means in the name. And Yahweh Shai is who you people ignorantly call Jesus Christ. Yah means he. Hawah Shai means deliverer. The true names of the Heavenly Father and his only begotten Son. These are the powers that are going to execute this, man. That are going to ordain this divine judgment that you damn devils cannot escape. There's a tab that has to get paid. And everything that you've done, all right, since we were coming out of Egypt pursuing the Deuteronomy 25, hey, it's got to be answered for. All praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai Bahashem Raka Kwedash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, where I learned this 144% truth. Lord willing, you Akiyam and Akwaf were edified. Barakata Yahweh, Barakata Yahweh Shai, Kal Halalim La Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh Shai Bahashem Raka Kwedash Shalom.